Fuck. Trust my eyes, can I trust my mind? What did you do it? You were so late. What's going on? I've been waiting for you for like an hour. This is not a good way to start season three. Let's go. Oh, by the way, hey, wait, come back, come back. Welcome to episode 51. Let's go. Hello. Good, how are you? Hey, thanks. Yeah, no, I just didn't. It's my address. I'm going to show you today. Eight. Me too. Hello. How are you? Come on. Great. Is everything up to par? Yeah, I think. I guess the only questions I had. Um, the red is me, right? Yes. The blue is our guests. Yep, 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 yep. Um, oh, but there's some shaking on his own. I remember sure. the house was very dark. Yes, we, we've, we've uh, so is, I, So I'm queuing. Here's a new listing of yes. what I would change? Yes. So a new listing. I, I guess I haven't seen that. Yes, yeah, so that's what oh. we'll go through um, in okay. the showroom. We'll show you ahead of time. Okay, so am I mentioning what's terrible about it before we go into what's good about it? Because no, you kind of have... I think I don't want you to be repetitive. So okay. once we... Yeah, we removed all the books and everything. Clutter is a turn off. It makes things feel too crowded. Family room. Big family room, kitchen. nice sitting area, and large kitchen. Are... But now she is the one. We put these up when... So now we're at the Rachel Ray show with my publicist, Sarah. Say hi to Sarah. Getting here. We got tacos, obviously in the Rachel Ray show. I don't think I have to fill out anything else, do I? Uh, nope, I'm good. And this is a classic example of, of controlling brand, right? Controlling brand. Like, I don't have to be here. I'm not going to be talking about $10 million apartments in New York City when I'm on the show. No, I'm going to be talking about $200,000 apartments, you know, and $200,000 houses. Because the more people who know what I sell, the better, right? That's why I do all of this stuff, because it's actually something I can control. I reach out to as many different news publications, newspapers, digital publications, TV shows, news shows as possible, letting them know, hey, maybe you know me, maybe you don't. Oh, show just turned on behind you. Maybe you know me, maybe you don't, but I sell real estate and you should have me on your show. You should put me in your newspaper. Let's talk, let's talk, because I want to put myself out there as much as possible. And you should be doing the same thing. Maybe you're not on the right to race show, but what you should do is you should find an article about something that interests you, find an article about something that you sell, if you sell something, put it on LinkedIn, and then do a, do a reaction video, do a commentary video, write a caption about what you think, and do that every morning before 10.30, and see what happens. The more people who know what you do and why you do it, the better, and then more business comes from that. And that's why I focus so much on what I can control, like, going out in here and talking to Susan about removing all the photos of her glamour shots of her baby with her cat. Billion dollars of real estate. So he's here to prep you guys on how to buy and sell homes. That's a big one, right? So please welcome back to our show, the author of Sell It Like Sirhan, Ryan Sirhan. Thank you for having me. Uh, where should we begin? Yeah, I would say the number one mistake that most everybody makes is overpricing. Always. It always comes down to the price, right? Because you want as much money as you could possibly get for your house. Right. And even if Bill's house sold for, I don't know, whatever amount over here, you want more. Because Bill sucks. <laughs> and your house is way better. <laughs> and you raise better kids and they're smarter, so you should get more money. That is never a good way to go into selling your home. 
So always think about what the actual price is, and you'd rather have more people come in the door to start and maybe even bid up than start too high, tell all your friends your house is worth X, and then it never actually gets there, and then it's really embarrassing, and then maybe you have to move in with your parents and things get bad. Just the last thing, piece of advice I'll give. I know a lot of us love pets, a lot of us love dogs and cats. Yeah, my daughter's a 65 pound pit bull, so be careful. Okay, well, you don't have to get rid of your pets. I'm not saying get rid of your pets okay. to sell. <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta remember again, not every buyer that's gonna walk into your home likes pets, likes dogs, likes cats. So if you have doggy bowls or leashes, just put them away. If you have a 65 pound dog, maybe take the dog for a little walk so your person <laughs> could come in and not see it without any kind of prejudice or allergies. Um, please come back as soon as you can. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. I try to do as much as I possibly can. You know, the audience that watches the vlog, that watches Million Dollar Listing, that watches Sell Like Sirhan, that watches my social media, that watches Rachel Ray, is not all the same. It's all very different. That watches CNBC, that watches CNN, that watches the Today Show and everything else that we do. That reads all the LinkedIn posts that we have and the blogs and the stuff that we're doing for Forbes. I, I, I wanna sell homes to all seven and a half billion people on the planet. I know that's physically impossible, but I'm gonna do my fucking best to do that. And I gotta let them all know that I sell homes. So now we, go to, we gotta go back to Soho. Uh, then we're going up to So High. Remember that neighborhood that I invented? We're literally all over the place. I think we have 18 appointments today. Back to back to back to back to back. We just got out of the car because there's too much traffic. We're gonna walk. That's 2019 to me. I can't control the traffic, so we're gonna walk. I'm gonna focus a lot in 2019 only on the things I can control and not on the things that I can't control. I think that's the most important message that I want to live with for the next year. Fuck, for the next decade, right? People spend too much time at dinner, on conversations, in social media, in the news, talking about things that they can't control when all that really matters are the things that we can. I started thinking about this even when I was a little kid, like even when I was a teenager, you know, I realized, looked in the mirror, I can't control acne. I can't control my face. But what I could control was working out. I could control my body. I can control what I put in my mouth and what I don't put in my mouth. You know, that was like a big wake up call for me. So instead of spending so much time focused on things I cannot control, like the traffic, like politics, like the market, like the noise, like buyers who pull out of deals, like somebody who wanted to fire me and they won't even tell me why. I, fuck, I, don't, I can't control that. I wanna focus all of my time, all of my energy, every waking breath I have on the things I can control. Like the fact that I can get out of the car and just walk. The fact that I can go after new business every day. Like today, I have 18 appointments in the middle of the day. So when everybody else is freaking out, right? when everyone else is at a complete panic mode and everyone else is slowing down because of all the things out there that are happening that they can't control, the ones who succeed are the ones who speed up the ones who do more, and the ones who speed into the curve. So that's what I'm doing. That's what 2019 is all about. That's what season three is all about. Now we just gotta keep walking to the office because now I don't have a car. Follow me, my reality, you're adoring. I got places to go. The most important thing to us is keeping momentum going. Like literally the most important thing. So the phone calls, the emails, the social media push, the back-end social media marketing that we do with the videos, because we have multiple videos now that are out there that are rotating and grabbing people, right? We've got the one video we made, or he made with the dancing building, right? Which is just pure brand, pure building, pure excitement. Pushing about the Hudson Yards and attachment to Hudson Yards, pushing about the neighborhood and attachment to kind of creating a neighborhood, which is what got a lot of the kicks. So this is something I can control. Getting this project, going after this project, bringing it to market the way we did with 640 people last week, that's something I can control. Standing here right now on this wood floor, looking at these ceilings, brainstorming how we're gonna sell it, that's something I can control. That keeps me happy. That keeps me positive. That keeps me focused on the work. 
focusing on the fact that the market's bad, focusing on the fact that there's too much inventory, focusing on the fact that we're too far west, whatever the issue may be, those are things I can't control, and those are things that are a total waste of my fucking time. So that's why I love what I do. Because I get to decide every single day what I'm gonna focus on, and what I'm gonna focus on is only what I can control. And that's what 2019 is all about for me, is controlling as much as possible. As long as I focus and as long as I stay productive, and as long as I take care of the work every single day, and as long as I stay proactive, we're going up and we're going higher. When everyone else slows down, you speed into the curve. That's it, it's cold. Welcome to season three. That's the end of the video. Now click one of these to keep watching more. Give me this one. Give me this one. This one. This one's pretty good. No? This one. Oh yeah. This one. This one. Maybe watch them both at the same time. No? Maybe like this one. This one. What about this one? This one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. That one's good. Good choice. Good choice. No, this one. No, this one.